Hey everybody, it's the Hardy Girl with another room tour or display tour. Um, welcome to the Mad Platter Record Store. Um, I was inspired to do this by Shelly Granabaugh here on YouTube uh, because she made a record store for her Julie doll and I wanted to make a uh, record store for my 70s girls uh, and I had a lot of fun doing this. This was really great. I just had a wonderful time searching through all the pictures and things on uh, Google and, and so forth to make uh, this record store. Um, so I'm going to show you some of the details and give you a little tour before I take this down because as much as I'd love to leave it up because I love it so much, this is in the dining room <laughs> and it can't stay up um, much longer because I'm going to be starting uh, camp pretty soon with the girls and the guys. Um, so I will zoom in here and show you some details. Um, let me scoot over here. It's easier to scoot than to zoom because I get blurry. <laughs> Not a very sophisticated camera. Anyway, um, so here we have the records. Okay. And um, I did actually go through, I, as I said, Google and um, YouTube and, I mean, not YouTube, eBay and several things uh, to get these pictures. So let me show you the 45s. Now, for those of you who don't know what 45s are, 45 RPM, as you see, they're written on the box, 88 cents each. Uh, RPM stands for revolutions per minute. A revolution is um, the time that it spins around the record player. Okay, so a 45 would have one song on each side, and it would spin around 45 times per minute. Okay, and this was these were what was were called singles, I guess you could call them. Uh, there was less like two songs on there just to give you a taste of what was on the album. So I will show you what is in the box here. Okay, put this down here. Okay, so here we have, and these are actual jackets with the records inside. Okay, and that's Casey and the Sunshine Band. What one did I do? I forgot. <laughs> I'm the Boogeyman. Okay, that's Casey and the Sunshine Band. And this is the actual the way the, the record looked and the way that the jacket looked. Okay, except it didn't have um, <laughs> uh, black on the back. It was the same on both sides. But I used construction paper and a printout to do that. Okay, uh, here we have Motown. Okay, and that's the Jackson 5. I'll take that out. I won't take it out. I won't take all of them out. But um, that one's Get It Together by the Jackson 5. And this is uh, Jackie Blue by Ozark Mountain Daredevils. And Julie's favorite, The Partridge Family on Bell Records, I Think I Love You. And uh, I believe this is The Three Degrees, When Will I See You Again. And <clears throat> Elton John, Crocodile Rock. The Ohio Players with Fire. And yes, the um, 45 is actually inside of it. With the actual labels of all the records. And the only reason I really don't want to take all of them out is because I'll have to put them back in the box here like this. So I didn't want to take everything out because I am doing this one-handed. Put those back. And put, I'll put Casey and the Sunshine back later. I'll just put that right over here. Okay, and now here we have the albums. Um, and again, just like I did with my Halloween video, uh, the Woolworth display that I had, these are just pieces of cardboard with the graphics to the albums on there. There are no actual records inside these. So here we have Rick Springfield, Comic Book Heroes, front and back. Okay. Again, Casey and the Sunshine Band. This was a very popular album. Uh, Casey and the Sunshine Band were very popular during the 70s. One of my favorite groups for sure. Um, here are the Silvers with their album uh, Showcase. And uh, you guys heard Boogie Fever um, during the uh, baton performance. That's this group right here. And uh, one of my personal favorites, Seals and Crofts. 
and their hit Summer Breeze was on this album. Um, I still have this record today. In fact, I have a, quite a few of these records. I don't have all of them, but I do have some of them. Um, and this box is uh, Get It Together by the Jackson 5. Yep, have this one. <laughs> um, here's Bee Gees, their main course album. The Captain and Tennille. And they did um, Shop Around and um, Muskrat Love and a few other hits of the 70s. And here is very young Foster Silvers of the Silvers family that you saw. Um, he uh, branched out briefly into a solo career when he was just a little guy. And uh, a lot of people were comparing him to Michael Jackson, and I don't think he thought that was exactly very fair, because he was a good singer in his own right. Anyway, okay. And back here are the same records. I just put them in a used record uh, one because when I was making this, I ruined one of the records that I was working on by accident. Uh, something spilled on it, so I had to print the records out again. And basically, they're just cardboard printouts um, with construction paper reinforced on the back. Um, so I did that. And of course, you guys all recognize Julie's uh, record player from her sound accessories. Um, what I did was so that people could listen to what they wanted to hear before they bought it, and a lot of record stores did that, was I made some headphones and put a, a beanbag over here so you could sit and listen. Uh, the headphones look like they're attached to the record player. They are not. Okay. I made these with uh, a paper cup, some cardstock, and some twist ties. Now, a lot of the twist ties that you get when you unwrap a doll or something in a package, sometimes they're very, very long. Well, I put duct tape over some very long ones right here. So that was a one long piece of uh, twist tie right there, probably from a, something in a box or something like that I got it from. And then um, these are paper cups. On the top here is cardstock and another twist tie, so it's adjustable to the doll's head, um, so you can use it on a smaller doll or a larger doll, and some craft foam here for accent. Okay, so basically duct tape, paper cups, twist ties, and cardstock. Okay, and I put it under here, so it looks like it's connected to the record player. See that? Same basic color. Okay, all right. Um, I want to show you guys the walls, and then I'll show you what's on the other table. Um, here we have some uh, 70s groovy looking posters, and I'll tell you who all these wonderful people are. Okay, and then I'll get to the other details. That wonderful young man you saw, Foster Silvers, that's him when he was a bit older. Okay. Again, uh, mess ups on the records because I printed them too big, and rather than waste them, I'd put them on the walls. Peace, Love, and Music. You've all seen that one probably online. Uh, this is Elton John, who sings Crocodile Rock, um, one of my favorite songs. And he has a lot of other wonderful songs, but that was my favorite from the 70s. And there's a rainbow. Um, these are the Williams brothers, Andy and David, uh, Andy Williams' sons. Uh, they were featured on an episode of The Partridge Family, and I thought they were just so cute. And they also did a couple of specials with their... Uh, with Andy Williams and um, their twins, obviously. Um, difficult to tell apart, but not impossible. Um, my favorite, I believe, was Andy, I think. <laughs> Again, not, not entirely difficult to tell them apart. I think that's David, and I think that one's Andy, um, if I remember correctly. Anyway, I could be wrong about that, and I'm sure somebody will correct me if I am. Okay, another record down there. That's the David Cassidy record. Um, oh, here are the posters. Now, these are not really posters. They're just rolled up pieces of paper. A poster is 65 cents each in a small box with some stickers. Okay. And moving up here to the wall again. This is Michael Jackson when he was younger. Rest in peace, Michael. We love you. Um, and a flower poster. I'll get to what's on this table in a minute. I just want to show you the rest of what's on the wall. Uh, again, a mess up on the records, but I decided to put them up on the wall. That's a Crocodile Rock by Elton John. Ah! Julie's favorite. 
David Cassidy, who played Keith Partridge on The Partridge Family, Julie's favorite show. And the reason why that is Julie's favorite show is I had a major crush on this guy when I was little. I still love him today. And um, I was blessed enough to meet him several times. He's a really sweet guy, nice person, great singer, and uh, have a lot of good memories playing his records when I was a kid and watching The Partridge Family. Uh, the Jackson 5 Get It Together 45. Uh, here's Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder is a wonderful musician. Uh, some of you may or may not know he is blind um, and never let that stop him from accomplishing all that he could ever do and all that he could ever be. Wonderful guy. Um, here's a <laughs> Volkswagen bug. Um, swinging around. Rick Springfield before he did Jesse's Girl. If any of your parents know who Rick Springfield is, he sang Jesse's Girl in the 80s. Uh, he did try to launch a career for himself in the 70s. Didn't quite work out. He worked out better in the 80s, but I fell in love with him in the 70s. He even had his own cartoon show, which I thought was rather impressive, Mission Magic on Saturday mornings. Um, and here is Tony DeFranco of the Frank DeFranco family, and their breakout hit was Heartbeat, It's a Love Beat. Okay? Now... I'm going to slide down here to the magazines, okay? Now, I worked real hard to do these magazines. Um, they're not actual magazines, of course, but they look like they are, okay? Uh, we've got several copies of uh, Tiger Beat, Ride On, there's Teen, Ebony Magazine, another copy of Ride On, uh, the Teen Tiger Beat Spectacular of David Cassidy, and here's um, a Tiger Beat with se several uh, 70s teen idols on there. Here's another copy of Ride On with the Silvers on the cover. Okay, Tony DeFranco, more um, 70s people, another one of David Cassidy. And I did these. I will take this one down. Somebody mentioned to me when they saw this video that they loved Bobby Sherman. That's David Cassidy and Bobby Sherman right there early 70s uh, guys. What I basically did to make these magazines was construction paper, printouts, and yes, they have print ads on the back like the um, actual magazines would have had, but on the inside is just cut up magazines just for filler. It's not real. The magazines are just cut up filler. So that's how basically I did these. So I'll show you these. That's uh, Tiger Beat on the front, and a Panasonic print ad on the back. That's a Tootaloop radio. Yes, I had that radio as a kid, and I found another one today. Uh, that's a print ad for the Tootaloop radio. Let's see. And uh, right on with the Jackson 5 on the front, and a Coke ad on the back. Yep. And here is Teen Magazine with Susan Day on the cover, who co-starred with David Cassidy in The Partridge Family. Um, she is on the front, and a Noxzema ad, print ad is on the back. And uh, here's Ebony Magazine with the Jackson 5, or caricatures of the Jackson 5. Um, that's a really cool cover. And um, a Have It Your Way at Burger King print ad on the back. Okay, and... Uh, see, Right On Magazine on the front, it's got the silvers on there, and a hair product on the back. Can't make out what that is. What does that say? Afro Sheen. Haha. <laughs> Afro Sheen, yes. I remember Afro Sheen products back in the day. <coughs> Tiger Meat on the front. Several teen idols on the, of the 70s there. And Copper Tone tanning products on the back. Back in the 70s, it was not about the sunscreen. It was about getting a tan. Um, the ultraviolet rays had not quite penetrated us down here on this planet. There's a hole in the ozone layer now, and now all those wonderful ultraviolet rays get on us, and we have to block the sun rather than embrace it. <coughs> kind of sad, though. Anyway, uh, David Cassidy Spectacular, Tiger Beat Spectacular on the front, and uh, Tame Cream Rinse on the back. <coughs> Oops. Anyway, you basically get the idea. There's right on uh, on the front and um, a Pepsi ad on the back. And basically, I made this rack, this magazine rack, with just uh, tri-folded pieces of cardboard and two other uh, strips of cardboard glued into place. 
There's Tony DeFranco. And Lisa bought that one in my video. And a Clairol Herbal Essence ad on the back. Okay. Um, here's another Tiger Beat. Various artists and people on there. And um, a lip gloss ad on the back with the different flavors of lip gloss that you can get back in the day. I believe it was uh, Bonnie Bell. And the last one, David Cassidy. And a McDonald's ad. Ta-da. Okay. So, that are the magazines. And, yeah, that was a lot of fun to do. And it like, just sort of brought me right back to my childhood. Okay. Here on this table is um, some 8-tracks. And 8-tracks are tapes that, instead of rewinding and fast-forwarding as the cassette tape that Julie Albright had would have done. This worked on the idea of tracks. So basically, um, instead of rewinding or fast forwarding, uh, eight track players had a program button and you would hit the program you want. And it was usually about two to two and a half songs per program um, on there. And so instead of rewinding and fast forwarding, you would just hit the program to get the one that you wanted. Now, somebody asked me, how did you do this? Um, <laughs> These are actually cassettes, okay? But these were uh, something called pocket rockers from back in the 80s. Pocket rockers worked on the same principle as 8-tracks, only it was a 2-track. Um, these are actual tapes. See that? What I did was I just uh, printed, got printouts of 70s people and taped them on to the pocket rockers tapes. I do have the player that actually plays this, um, and I use it for Sonny's 8-track player in her room. So these are pocket rockers, two track tapes, but they're doll size, which is perfect. So they look like eight track tapes from back in the day. So um, if you're wondering how that was accomplished, that's how I did that. Okay. So those are the eight tracks. I got, you know, Tony DeFranco, Stevie Wonder, uh, Hollow Notes, you know, uh, some different guys on there. So they're, they're also just basically printouts. Okay. But they are working tapes. They don't play the songs that I have uh, pasted on there, but they are working tapes. Okay? Back here, blank cassette tapes. Okay, I'm getting close on that so you could see. Blank cassette tapes. Those are basically done, and I did have a question about that. Those are done with basically a printout on cardstock. And I cut them out really small. And the nice thing about them is, is that they're small enough to actually fit inside the tape recorder from Julie Sound Accessories. So if I slide them into place and close the door, it looks like there's an actual tape in the tape player that would be playing. Um, because the tape recorder in uh, the Sound accessory says, uh, Story of My Life, Julie Albright. And, of course, my doll's name is Julie Newman, so that really doesn't help me. So this was a good idea because it makes it look like she's actually got blank cassettes in that thing and actually playing them. Okay, so that's basically it. I'm going to slide back here and give you another overview of the record store, and that's how I did it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, anybody who has a Julie Albright doll and who's really into keeping it historically accurate, um, this might be a fun idea for you to try with a little help from your parents, or if you're an adult collector, this would be a lot of fun for you to do. I know it was a blast for me, and I've had this up for about two and a half weeks. <laughs> I just, I, I put it up right before vacation and did a, an entry on Julie's blog about it, um, if you care to look at that. I know you've already seen the video, but the details are different on the blog. Um, if you want to, um, you know, give this a try, that, that would be great, and then you could post a video too here on YouTube or on your blog and tell us about it. That would be wonderful. Okay. So, um, this is the Hardy Girl signing off. Hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching everybody. Bye-bye.